We all know how parking on campus can be, in a word, infuriating. The GC administration made significant changes in who can park where this year, and it might be an understatement to say not everyone's happy about it. GC 360's Isabella Echeverria has the full story. On the Georgia College campus, the parking situation is frustrating for students and teachers alike. Uh, every morning, I'm looking around for a place to park and I can't find one and it's really ridiculous, honestly. Um, I've been here for four and a half years pretty much and uh, I, it's always been a problem. It'll continue to be a problem. People are doing nothing about it. I just can't stand it, honestly. Parking is awful. Um, I hate it. I usually walk to class because parking sucks and they need to do something about it. Preferably take away the teacher spot. Sorry guys, but we need more parking spaces. The Georgia College Auxiliary Services actually did do something about parking this year, implementing the first new parking plan since 2006. The bottom line is more closing spots for employees and fewer spaces for students, but more student parking farther out. The heart of campus was um, devoted primarily to employees. The overall number of parking spaces has not decreased. In fact, it's increased over the last several years. But what's happened is we've had to get creative in acquiring more land, and some of that has been pushed out further to the perimeter. Than Here are the changes that are now in effect. The Adams and Kilpatrick lots had been converted to employee-only lots. Students are no longer allowed to park there. Cooler says students who previously used those lots can park in Centennial. They are also adding an additional parking lot behind the depot that will provide 170 additional resident spaces. Color says students who previously used the Kilpatrick lot can now park in the newly designed all-commuter West Thomas Street lot. The old courthouse and Mayfair lots have been converted to guest parking only. Ten spaces in the Peeler lot have been converted from employee parking to commuter for students. Callers suggested that students use the West Thomas Street parking lot and then take the bus to campus. If you just go there first, park, hop on a shuttle, you can be here a lot faster than trying to circle campus and find something closer. Parking and Transportation says they try to be as fair as possible, but faculty parking is their priority, which is one thing that students do not like about the new parking plan. I think that the commuter parking or the parking for students is too far away from main campus. If you're running late for class or something and you're like sprinting from all the way over there and coming here is really difficult. Many students have suggested building a parking garage as an ultimate solution. The bottom line is it's just not financially feasible. Another issue is the conversion of some street spaces to two-hour parking. We were noticing that there was also more two-hour parking which is kind of annoying because I'm in classes for longer than two hours. John Bowen, the senior manager for parking and transportation, says parking is always a work in progress. Again, awesome. It's not a perfect plan. Yeah, sure. we're gonna, I'm sure we're going to be tweaking it over time to right. you know, make, it, make it even better. You can see the updated parking plan along with the maps at www.gcsu.edu slash parking. This is Isabella Echeverria, GC360. The city of Milledgeville still has not released an official damage figure for the destruction done by Tropical Storm Irma in early September. The storm ripped out tree limbs and sent them cascading to the ground. They fell on power lines and trees came down and damaged property. Down power lines caused outages for residents and students on campus, sparking a campus closure for three days. Strong winds downed a few trees on front campus and they eventually were cleared and no significant other damage occurred. Milledgeville residents got the opportunity to watch as crews began the second phase of the demolition of the Georgia Power Plant on Lake Sinclair. <laughs> crews performed a controlled implosion at the Harley Branch Power Plant in mid-September. Shockwaves could be heard miles away. The aftermath of the implosion is a sight to see for anyone passing by on Highway 441, whether you're leaving town or coming back. The first phase of the demolition took place last year with the demolition of the smokestack. And just ahead, we will have our very first cooking segment, the recipe box. Also, how Georgia College athletes are standing out. A hint, it's not on the field. And stay tuned for our coverage of a 5K that's all about kids in need. What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. 
a whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play, what you wear, how you dance, or even what direction life takes you. You just need to be there. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. My new mom and I have a lot in common. <sighs> the great outside. We both love the outdoors. It's so shiny. That's not a flower. We both love geology. Oh, look. An igneous one. That's not a rock. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle. <gasps> That's not a dog. Hanging out has been kind of fun. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. This past weekend, GC students painted the town for the kids. Reporter Tristan Watson has more. GC Miracle teamed up with 5U Sorority and Alpha Tau Omega Fraternity to host the second annual FT Color Run. The morning started out with a few stretches and even got a little bit of dancing to get the runners started. The race was so packed with participants, even a few four-legged runners showed up. We've raised probably around $6,000. Before day of registration, we had 312 um, runners registered. And I'm, I think it went really well today. All of the runners said they had a great time. And I hope we raised even more money than we think we did for the kids. And the race was definitely for the kids. Proceeds from the race go to the Children's Hospital in Macon, Georgia. We even had a chance to talk with miracle families like Tiffany yeah. and Hunter. So Hunter um, is a miracle baby. He was born in February of 2014 and was born with a spontaneous pneumothorax, which means that he had a hole in his lungs. So he was born with a collapsed lung. And his first few days were spent in the NICU over in Macon at the Children's Hospital. It's actually pretty funny. Um, there was a billing coding error when Hunter was born and we were turned down for insurance coverage. And it, it ended up getting worked out, but it, it resulted in me seeing like the actual costs a child would have to pay for to receive those needs. Um, so it's huge, the amount that goes into saving these babies. Um, so it's cool to be able to give back to that and support that in a really fun way. For GC360, I'm Tristan Watson. This year we have added an exciting new cooking segment to our GC360 lineup. This week, McKenna Mater and Catherine Lapenta are creating an easy and scrumptious lunch. Let's see what they have for us. Alright, welcome to the recipe box, where everything's convenient, affordable, and doable. Today we're making chicken parmesan wraps, so we have all of our ingredients right here. We're going to go ahead and mix our ingredients together. So first we have our grilled chicken best strips. Do you want to tell us about those? So you can buy these in Aldi, Kroger, Walmart, literally everywhere. Yeah. Just like to reduce time on just like making actual chicken because that's already hard enough. So all we're gonna do is just open it up and just put it in the bowl. Yep, and you can use grilled cold chicken like this, or you can use rotisserie chicken and shred it, whatever you want to do. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in the bowl along with that. Exactly. We're gonna do four cheese of marinara sauce. We're gonna take a cup of that, pop that in there. And you just need one cup. Yes. One cup of this is going to be enough to bring it all together. Great. And then you also add a teaspoon and a half of Italian seasoning. You know, just add some flavor in there. Exactly. And we're going to go ahead and mix it all up. The colors look great. Yeah. Together, you look so good. It's so easy to make because you literally just have three ingredients. 
seasonings, all the spices are in there that need to be in there. We're also going to add a little bit of salt and pepper, but other than that, just three ingredients and you're good to go with this dish. She's just going to do about an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper and a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. So we're going to mix that together. Now we're going to take our, you can use flatbreads, tortillas, whatever works for you. And again, you can make these hot or cold. So you can go ahead and warm these up or just keep them cold. She's going to go ahead and scoop it on there. And you can see it's so easy, just get on. Make sure you're putting it in the middle of the quesadilla so that you have room on the sides to fold in the sides. And then we're gonna go ahead and sprinkle, you can use Parmesan, mozzarella, whatever cheese you want. Whatever just, works. Yeah, whatever you have in your kitchen at that time. Like we said, we're all about doing it convenient and affordable, so whatever's in your kitchen, you can use. And then you're gonna go ahead and fold it up. tell you how Georgia College athletes are being recognized for their academic efforts off the field. And then we'll take a look at the scores from all of the GC sports teams. But first, we also have a glimpse at how John Millage and Baldwin County's football teams are doing this year. You won't want to miss what we have for you. What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney and I'm your dividend. Good. Homemade noodles. Oh. Marty, stop it. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. It reminds me, I've been thinking uh, maybe we should try a new form of birth control. I heard about this one, it's called the IUD, intrauterine device. Or we could try the patch on your arm. Actually, I think that one goes on your butt. Bedsider.org has birth control information and a lot more. And it's... What do you think, though? Arm or the butt? We cannot be bystanders. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. We can warn someone when their drink isn't safe. And disrupt the situation. We can. Get someone the cab. Or walk them home safely. We can make campuses safer for our friends, our roommates, our, our classmates, classmates, our, our fellow, fellow human, human beings. beings. We cannot be bystanders. We, we can. can. Intervene. It's on us. All of us. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Elizabeth Wampler. And I'm Katie Collett. 
and we're here to bring you all you need to know about sports this semester. High school football is in full swing here in Milledgeville, which means another season of domination for John Millage Academy. JMA is riding a 22-game winning streak as they sit as 7-0 this season. They 15-0 last year, capping off their run through Region 4 AAA with the state championship. Head coach J.T. Wall, who played at JMA in the 90s, says that participation was an issue in his day, but he's been up building up the program and athletes have been coming out in droves to play for the Trojans. John Millage Academy will play Georgia Military College Prep School this Friday, renewing crosstown football rivalry game that hasn't been played since 1986. JMA may have the success in the win-loss column, but Baldwin County has a recruit who is getting national attention. Senior wide receiver Jatavis Harris is a three-star recruit who has garnered offers from Florida, Miami, and Tennessee, among others. He verbally committed to Tennessee, but recently retracted the, that commitment. Being a student athlete can be a demanding task for anyone. However, it seems that Georgia College athletes are better at it than just about anyone in the Peach Belt Conference. Georgia College led the Peach Belt with 51 athletes named to the Division II Athletic Directors Association Academic Achievement List. The daily grind of being a student athlete doesn't leave a lot of time for much besides studying and practicing. So junior basketball player Isaac Thomas says time management is a key part to succeeding on the court and in the classroom. During basketball season, I try to sleep in, but I'm usually up early. And I go to class, I come home, try to take a nap before practice, then I practice and go home. I study kind of late, eat dinner with the team, hang out just a little bit when I can. Stu Student-athletes have the added burden of co collegiate competition in addition to a full course load. Athletes needed a GPA of 3.5 or higher to make the list. Junior softball player Holland Corsi was one of the 51, and she tells us that while being an athlete might be a seasonal task, being a student-athlete is a full-time job. During the spring, I'm pretty much always studying on the bus or after practice. So you'll see on the bus at night, all the girls will have their lights on because we're all studying. So. <laughs> Georgia College athletics routinely compete in Peach Belt and NCAA tournament play. So to have all 11 varsity sports recognized for academic achievement is something that, according to Assistant Athletic Director Al Wesson, says a lot about the commitment of the athletes. If you can get into Georgia College, then you're, you're a pretty strong academic student to begin with. Uh, so to add in all those extra elements of practice and travel time for games and things like that, it just it, it's so impressive what these student athletes can do. Wow, 51 athletes? That is really impressive, really right? Something. It was a week full of sports for the Georgia College and Milledgeville area. Here's a brief recap of the scores around the area. John Millage Academy stayed on track with a defeat of Westminster Schools of Augusta, 38-0. Georgia College men's cross country ranked 10th in the Southeast region, 4th in the Peach Belt. Georgia College golf placed 10th in the UNG Invitational, shooting plus 37 after three rounds of play. And that's sports for this week. Make sure to tune in next time for a full report on the world of sports in Milledgeville. Up ahead, our new entertainment anchor, Harley Pope, shows us what it takes to dive into drag. It's kind of a big question, I think. Community is motivated. My new mom and I have a lot in common. <sighs> the great outside. We both love the outdoors. It's so shiny! That's not a flower. We both love geology. Oh, look! An igneous one. That's not a rock. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle! <gasps> That's not a dog. Hanging out has been kind of fun. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Thank you, dear. Well, you're very supple. It's like I was at your age. Back then, I was a sex expert. Used to call me the buttered biscuit. I know about birth control, too. So you can ask me anything, baby. Bedsider.org has birth control information and a lot more. And it's... Have you had sex in this car yet? I think someone at my friend's school has this thing called autism.
My friend's brother's son has autism. My neighbor's son has autism. My son has autism. Autism is getting closer to home. Today, one in 68 children is diagnosed with autism. That's about a 30% increase in two years. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Bobcats, I'm Harley Pope, your newest entertainment news host here at GC360. I'll be keeping you up all semester up to date on every big event. Milledgeville hosted their very first drag show of the year and I got the chance to get up close and personal with the queens. Let's hear what they had to say. Drag culture here in Milledgeville is anything but a drag. On September the 14th, four amazing queens and two kings took to the stage in Buffington's to show off what style really looks like. The queen behind it all, Miss Katrina Prowess, prepared for her big night and talked with us about why drag is important. I think drag is something that can't really be pinned down and that's why so many people love it so much. That's why so many people want to do it because we're very intrigued by the unknown. And I think that drag is a form of expression that not a lot of people know about. And I think that that's pretty punk rock. Now every show dazzles the audience with amazing talent, but not too many people focus on the transformation itself. Drag co-host Dana Brigance gave us insight on the process. It's kind of a convoluted way of showing everyone who you actually are because, I mean, I, they could show up to like class and the makeup that they do, and that would be interesting. <laughs> But it's just, it's so much more fun this way, and seeing people make that journey and discover things about themselves and about the world around them through drag is, it blows my mind, like, on a weekly basis. The drag show demonstrates more than hot outfits and pure attitude. Katrina Prowess focused her fashion into social awareness. Um, I am actually going to be sporting, um, for the first and last part of the show, I'll be wearing a... FCK racism shirt, um, and uh, it's a very deconstructed grunge uh, sort of punk rock riot girl thing. It's supporting a cause that I feel very passionately about. And white go-go boots, and you can't go wrong with white go-go boots. This past Tuesday was the final showing of the Georgia College Theater Department's production of the play Big Love. On Friday, a respondent of the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival came and judged the production, and hopefully will be nominating those involved to audition for professional theater jobs in the spring. They allowed us to film a rehearsal and speak with some of the cast. Why can't a man be more like a woman? The Georgia College Theater Department has just finished performing their first main stage production of the year, Big Love, a play by Charles Mee. Kathy Newman, the newest director here at Georgia College, has had the shortest rehearsal time of any director preceding her. During rehearsals, Newman warmed her actors up by practicing the art of Suzuki, which helps them to focus both their minds and bodies. The original performance dates also had to be moved due to complications from Hurricane Irma. Lead actor Chandler Stevenson told us what it's all about. Uh, my character's name is Nikos, and I'm one of the three brothers, and I really enjoy it because uh, the character I portray is unlike the other two brothers, and he actually actually gets to show love on stage and 
it's, it's very different than all the other shows I feel like we've done here at Georgia College, and uh, I'm, I'm excited. The show is about 50 brides who are being forced to marry their 50 cousins. In distress, the women flee to Italy to get away from the mess. The grooms come after them, and madness ensues. Big Love is a really physical show, so there's a lot of physical comedy as well as adult comedy mixed in as well, but overall it's a super funny show. I think when Charles Mee was writing it, he wrote really strong female characters, and so the message of the show is just really about female strength and like women empowerment. Josh Shepard, a junior theater major, explains his role in the show. I'm playing a Giuliano, Giuliano, who is a rich Italian host who is greeting all of these brothers and sisters that you're going to see in the show. And we've got a really cool wedding scene at the end where we've got uh, some violence, some dance. So there's all these different elements that are going to excite a bunch of different audiences. And it's so cool to watch. There were many exciting moments in the show, from unexpected stunts and fights to attention-grabbing musical numbers. We've lost a number of stars this year. Most recently, iconic musician and songwriter Tom Petty. He died after suffering a heart attack at his California home. He was 66. Playboy magazine founder Hugh Hefner also passed away on September 27th at the age of 91 inside of his beloved Playboy mansion. Rest in peace, Hugh. My heart is heavy this week thinking of the lives lost and families impacted by the mass shooting which occurred at the Las Vegas Country Music Festival last Sunday night. It is times like these that we must stand together. 59 people will never attend another music festival. Stay safe, Bobcats. Let's toss it back to the news desk. That's it here for news at GC360. And when we're not on air, we keep you up to date on our social media pages and our website, gc360news.com. I'm Jamie Hood. And I'm Caroline Hearn. Always available to you, GC360, where news comes full circle. Truly sad to hear about the events.